children will learn about the next resource that is water all of you know our earth is a watery planet almost 70% is covered with water and it is a very vital and precious abiotic natural resource all of you know water is used for various ways they are used in domestic cleaning cooking irrigation for power generation yes so and water is a very essential item in our lives now all of you know that about 97 of the water present on the earth is found in seas oceans which is salty in nature or we call it saline in nature out of the remaining 3% is of fresh water that exists 2% is found in the form of ice sheets and glaciers and they cannot be used for consumptions so only 1% of fresh water is available for human use and where is this fresh water from it's either ground water or surface water found in rivers and lakes or as water vapor in the atmosphere so only 1% is available for use now the next thing that we must know that water is a replenishable resource we can keep using it again and again how is it a re replenishable resource so let me tell you a brief history on this children do you know how water was formed on the earth okay let me tell you briefly that when the earth was born it was a huge ball of fire and when it started cooling down all the gases went into the into the atmosphere cooled and precipitated as rain and filled up all the depressions that were there in the earth which formed our oceans and seas and this water has been born almost millions of years back which still we use it so whatever water that is evaporated it condenses and precipitates as rain so which are why does it come back yes because of the gravitational pull of the earth so whatever is evaporated condenses and precipitates again back as rain so water can neither be added or subtracted from the earth its volume remains constant its abundance only seem to vary because it is in constant motion cycling through the ocean the air the land and back again through the processes which are the processes evaporation then condensation and precipitation and this is called as water cycle so what is important in the water cycle it's the sun yes and then the gravitational force of the earth which brings it back doesn't allow it to escape into the space because we have our atmosphere around the earth what is atmosphere a layer of air around the earth which prevents the water vapor to escape into the space children there are few facts in your book that you must know you can see how the consumption water has uh, consumption of water used by humans it has doubled up from in 1975 it was 3850 and by 2000 it has become 6000 and then you can see here another one fact that you should know a dripping tap wastes about 1200 liters in a year so you see that's why we keep telling you to close the taps and not let it drip there's another uh, important fact that is there in your book you can see have you heard about a water market see amreli a city in saurashtra with a population of 1.25 lakhs is completely dependent on purchasing water from nearby taluka see there is no water there is so much shortage of water and so rash being in the deserts they are running short of water and they have to buy water so then now let's see how degradation of water resources takes place 
Now humans use huge amounts of water not only for drinking and washing but also in the process of production. Water for agriculture, industry, generating electricity through reservoirs of dams and other usages. Now increasing population, rising demands for food and cash crops, increasing urbanization that means setting up of cities and rising standards of living are the major factors leading to shortage of, of fresh water and this what is happening this is leading to drying up of water sources or leading to water pollution now there is scarcity of water in many regions of the world most of africa west asia south asia parts of usa um, northwest mexico uh, entire australia facing shortage of fresh water supply mainly the countries which are located in the climatic zones are more prone to this water shortage and that's what are the reasons for water shortage we can say it's due to overuse we are polluting or contaminating the water that means we are also discharging untreated or partially treated sewage and chemicals and industrial effluents into the water bodies and uh, these chemicals are bi non biodegradable and reach human bodies through water and they pollute the water with nitrates, metals and pesticides. Now this can be controlled only if we suitably treat them and before releasing them into the water body. So we see we are polluting the water, we are overusing and finally we see variation in our seasonal rainfall. Sometimes we get heavy rainfall, sometimes there is no rainfall or shortage of rain. So this although it will be a replenishable resource, we see our rivers and lakes drying up which leads to shortage of water and these are the three main reasons overuse too much of use and why are we using because the population is increasing and the standards of living have gone high urbanization bringing new cities are being built rising demands for food so all these leads to drying up of our water sources let us look at the ways in which we can conserve water. Now first important thing for conserving water is we must do afforestation. We must plant more trees, increase the vegetation cover because this vegetation cover then slows down the water from, from just being going waste into the oceans and seas and becoming saline because we need more fresh water so what will happen due to the vegetation cover these this water will seep under ground and increase the water table okay so first more important thing is in afforestation and planting more trees and increasing the vegetation cover the next way that we can conserve water is building dams. Now, where dams are built across river to stop the water from just flowing away and being wasted. It collects all the water and this controls floods. And these are, as you can see, there are gates here. They open and these wat this water is used for irrigation. Now, a dam is a multi-purpose project. It's not only used for irrigation, it's used for power generation, storing water, it's also a tourist place. That is why dams are called as multi-purpose projects. Another way that we can save water is by digging canals and the water from the rivers are channelized through these canals and then the uh, farmers use it to irrigate their fields. So, this ensures that the water is conserved. Another way in dry regions where the water is less, they use sprinklers. You can see. Another way is by rainwater harvesting. You can see all the water that when it rains, it's collected on our roofs or uh, or a, a area where there is shallow area. All that water is then sent to a tank which is built underground the earth isn't it so all you can see the water is being collected in the tank now another way that we can do is is drip irrigation you can see how drip irrigation is so useful yes they put uh, pipes all around and make holes in it so the plants get water 
can you see this drip irrigation yes so these are the ways in which we can save water okay now we must just save water not only for our present use but for future that is why it is called as it is sustainable we must sustain it okay so it is said on an average if it rains for two hours it is enough of saving 8000 liters of water so and water being such a precious resource we must learn to conserve it and in our own way we can conserve it by not opening the tap and just collecting little water for brushing our teeth not letting this go waste okay taking a bath not to the shower but through a bucket you know with the shower we don't know how much of water we have wasted so in this way we can conserve water